day you wanna face But you're always gonna try out new ideas You gotta just keep your So where'd you grow up? Michigan. Michigan, baby. Detroit. The yeah. suburbs of Detroit. Did you have cars like this uh, when you were growing up? No, you know, in Michigan, this is car country, you've got to drive a Ford. You know, my whole family worked at Ford. Everybody I knew worked at Ford. In our town, that was the thing, is either you worked at Ford or GM. You know, even growing up, that's that was the goal for everybody you know that was the mantra that we were told go to school get good grades get a job at ford motor company and that was actually my original path you know it's like my dad was pushing me all throughout high school get straight a's and uh go to university of michigan and become an engineer like him you know i'll get a great job and make 80 grand a year have a nice life be able to take care of my parents and, uh, you know, that was the dream. I mean, that was really uh, the dream growing up is to, for people was live in Michigan. So when did you decide that, you know, that path wasn't for you? You know, I kind of had an, always an inkling, you know, but uh, being a mama's boy and a daddy's boy, we come from a very close family. You know, you never want to disappoint your parents. That's not who I am. And so, you know, I always kept it together and I did get the straight A's and I did everything the way I was supposed to, but when I came time to make my college choices, you know, I went to Michigan State instead of uh, University of Michigan and I walked myself down a different path. The first day I got there at school, uh, I was already in the computer lab on MSN Money researching how to trade stocks. And I uh, didn't have any articles on how to trade stocks, but there was no such thing back then. You just had to go on MSN Money and they'd talk about different stocks and you had to kind of figure it out. You know, they had this uh, MSN stock scouter rating system on all their stocks. So I'd always look at all the ones that were like nines or tens and be like, oh my God, these are amazing. And so I put like 500 bucks in one of them and of course uh, it didn't do anything. Uh, and then, you know, I would go and find whichever one was a number 10 or a number nine and put a few bucks down and uh, of course they wouldn't do anything. But you know, that was how I started college. You know, it was like that was my first chance at freedom, of being on my own. And uh, the, one of the first things I did was go to the computer lab and uh, see what I can learn about this stock thing. So why stocks? Like, what uh, what interests you in, in stocks? Well, that was 1999. I graduated high school. So during this time, you're talking about you know the dot com age. You're talking about a time where just immense wealth was being made everywhere you know pets.com you know dildos.com cars.com it could be anything and people were making billions of dollars and you know you would always see like your neighbor or some just dude that's like in your town and he'd like have this bmw and you'd look at it and be like man bob's like such a dick like how do you get a bmw Right, and he'd have on his license plate like Yahoo Baby or Amazon, but you know dot com. You know he would have something like that. And I'd be like, man, like there's like people that are making money doing this. Now all those people lost everything. So when the market changes, you know you're still doing the same thing you're doing, but the market crashed and everybody lost everything. But growing up, like, that's what I saw, and that's what was in my mind. And it was still going on when I got to college. Uh, it was the last days of the internet boom. And so that's all I was thinking about was like, man, dude, Bob's got a BMW and he's like a huge jerk. He lets his dog poop all over my lawn. So if he can do it, I can do it, you know? And so I had like this dream in my head, I was gonna take 5,000 bucks and make a million dollars or 500 bucks and make $500,000, you know? And, you don't know any better when you're 18. You know, you, that's just what you think because you only hear the stories, you know, on TV or the news or whatever of, right, those people that did that. And so that was what was in my brain. And that's how I got started off trading. But 
it's not how it exactly worked out for me. You know, I had to go really through the ringer. And so I did start with $500. I did make some money because it was the dot-com boom. And I built up my account. And I was thinking, like, man, like, I'll probably be quitting college soon. Like, this is, <laughs> college is for the jerks. Like, why, why would I want to put my nose in a bunch of books when I'm making all this money trading stocks? And then March 2000, so this is, you know, the end of my uh, first year, the dot-com bubble burst. And it was horrific for everybody, you know. And me, I don't even have that much money at the time, so... I mean, it's horrific for me. I can't even imagine what everybody else is going through, but the crash was unlike anything you've ever seen because you're talking about stocks that were like $500, $600, like Yahoo or Amazon. And, you know, a very short time later, I mean, you're talking about their $5 and $10. The destruction of wealth was just crazy. And, you know, I, I got the first hand experience of writing it all down and I didn't know anything about trading. I didn't know you could short stocks. You know, right now I short stocks more than I even long stocks. I didn't know you could do any of them. And so you just write it down until you run out of money. And so at some point, right, you lose it all and you run out of money and then you try it again. And then you try it again. And so, I, you know, I, I tried it a few different times uh, while I was in college uh, with varying degrees of success. But the common denominator was huge degrees of failure. You know, I'd always make really the same mistakes over and over of blowing up my account after a good run, losing all my profits when I'm up on a stock. And, you know, it took me a long time to realize, like, those are just, I mean, basic trading rules. But you don't know that when you're, you know, first starting is, like, you just think, like, you pick good companies that are being talked about and you're going to make a bunch of money. But there's that whole other subset of it is that you can have the best stock in the world but it doesn't mean you're gonna make money unless you buy it at the right time, sell it at the right time, buy the right amount of shares, and manage your risk aggressively over and over and over. And that was really the lesson that came out of you know my college career was, I had a pretty good knack of uh, picking good stocks. Like I had an idea of when they were gonna go and what kind of stories I like, but I didn't actually know anything about being a trader, which is the rule-based system of managing your risk and managing your position, and then most importantly, uh, managing yourself and your emotions. You know, that's—I mean—that's the whole ball game right there.